Okay, welcome everybody to the eighth lesson of Aleph Tav Ancient Hebrew Course. Tonight we are going to look at the letters um, Ma and the letter Nun. So yeah, it's very cold here and rainy tonight. I hope you are all warm where you are. So welcome everybody. Um, yeah, let's kick off and start with the lesson. So we will first quickly again look at the um, there we go. Um, at the homework. Into full screen. Um, sorry, let me try again. Okay. So the letters mom. Ma and Nun, but first homework. So anybody um, who had time to look at this, if you would please share your interpretation. So the word I gave you for homework is the, the word Gal, which means to redeem. And we all know the story of, of Ruth and her kinsman Redeemer and how that was a prophetic story of Yeshua and how he, he was to become our Redeemer. Um, so to redeem means to restore one to his original position or value or state he was in before. So the word gal in ancient Hebrew is spelled with the letter gum, the letter al, and the letter lam. So anybody, does anybody have a deeper interpretation? Um, you can preferably share on the chat. That's easier for me to view. Remember, there's no wrong interpretation. So we know, I wrote it down for you like this. So let's go on to the next one. So we know that the letter gum can mean foot, to carry something, to walk, to gather, because you will, will use your feet to walk and gather things. It can also mean to lift. Then the letter Al or Aleph means strength, power, leader, and first, or ox. And the letter Lam, which is the shepherd's staff, means staff, teach, authority, yoke, bind, towards, or even shepherd. So what do you see when you look at redeem? What could the deeper, deeper meaning be? Anybody? I think I'm going to start giving points for um, homework. <laughs> so what came up in my mind was um, the words lift, strength, and yoke. And if you put that, those together, then the word goal means to lift the yoke with strength because that's what the redeemer does, the one who redeems you. Um, Beatrice says to walk in his ways as his children and in his authority. Wow, that's true, because that's, that's what you will be able to do once you've been redeemed to your original identity and your status. That's a very good interpretation, Beatrice. Thank you. Um, I did actually not add the meaning of shepherd to the letter Lam, but that can also actually be um, a good one to use. Um, <clears throat> to be gathered, it can mean to be gathered by the power of the shepherd, to be gathered to him because we, we belong to him. It's a redeem can also mean to, to again, um, get possession of a, 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 a possession of a, um, property or ownership of something that you've lost. So um, that's why she was also our King's Redeemer. So that was your homework. Let's start with tonight's lesson because we've got quite some slides to work through. So the letter, the first one we will look at tonight is the letter Ma. And it's a very easy one to remember because we all know this letter in, in Afrikaans and in English as well. It's similar to the English um, letter M. Um, and I mean, if you, 
yeah, just look at the, the shape of the waves. Um, it resembles that letter. So the name of the letter is Ma in ancient Hebrew. In modern Hebrew, they call the letter Mem. So I sometimes still switch um, the names around. I think it doesn't matter if you use the ancient or the modern Hebrew names. It is just sometimes interesting to know and see, you know, what the letter was originally called and why, because it will sometimes um, reveal something more about the meaning of the letter. So the pronunciation of the letter is M as in Emily, um, a normal English M. The picture is a picture of waves or of liquid. Um, so the meaning can be waves, liquid, water, blood, because the ancients um, saw blood as, as red water before they understood biology and exactly how things worked. Um, it can also mean glue. Um, it can mean sea, it can mean mighty, mystery and chaos, because also in the ancient days, the ocean was really an unknown place. It was a feared place. People did not know what was happening beyond the waters, where it ended, ended what was on the other side. They didn't know what happened beneath the waters. I still don't think we know what happens beneath the waters. I mean, there's such deep places in the ocean. So it's really a place of mystery. Um, and the numerical value of Ma is 1040. So you spell the, the name of the letter, Ma, you spell with a, a Ma, a name, and then the letter Hay. And you remember Hay, it's the man with his arms raised, which means look, behold, a sight or revelation. Um, so if you put those two together, it can mean the mighty revelation. Um, and the word itself has the literal meaning of sea. And I think maybe if you can just imagine somebody who has never ever seen the ocean, who goes there for the first time and, and sees the waves. Um, I mean, it's really unlike anything else you would have ever seen. And it would have been a mighty revelation. Um, other combinations of, of the name Ma can be look at the water. Again, when you see the sea for the first time, um, it can mean behold the mystery, um, the mystery that's about to reveal. Um, so Ma refers to the sea as the unknown place, place or anything that is unknown or in question. I just explained that um, the sea was a feared place because it was not often traveled. They didn't know what, they, what, 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 lies, what lies behind it. So for this reason, it's also used as a question word. So ma is obviously sometimes used as um, to indicate who, what, when, where, why, and how. Um, just to, I just wanted to give you the scripture um, because of the mystery, behold the mystery, the one interpretation. We can look at Matthew 13, verse 10 to 11, which says, To you it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. And then Proverbs 18, verse 4 says, The words a man speaks are deep, are deep waters, a flowing stream, a fountain of wisdom. So the website Hebrew for Christians explained it so well to me. And they said, just like a, a spring bubbles up water from an unknown source, where you cannot see below the ground, you cannot see what's happening there. In the same way, wisdom bubbles up from Yahuwah, and he's that mysterious source of godly wisdom. And that was a very um, <clears throat> yeah, beautiful example because Markan then also means water. If you look in, at the Bible and at biblical symbolism, we know that, that the Bible, uh, the word of Abba is referred to as water. Um, and also in Revelations, we, we learn that the water and the ocean specifically um, is symbolic of nations and of people. So we can also keep this in mind when interpreting um, this word in certain contexts. 
the four forms of the letter Ma. So we can see how it developed, the ancient Hebrew. I mean, if you ask any child to draw you a picture of water, it will either look like this in the beginning or later on it will have the little curl at the top. But um, yeah, it's a, a very simple picture of water. Um, from the middle script, um, you can see it's actually a very good um, transformation from water to the letter M. You can start seeing, uh, you know, it looks like a cursive M. I really don't know what happened from the middle script to the late script. I struggled to see the connection because that looks like an F turned upside down. Um, and then you get the modern meme. So remember in the previous lesson, I explained that some modern letters has two forms, the medial and the suffit. So meme also has two forms depending on where it appears in the letter. So you've got the medial mem and then you've got the mem suffit. The mem suffit is the one left and it usually looks like a closed off box with one little ear. Um, the ancient and the middle texts um, evolved into the Greek and, and the Roman letter M. Um, yes. That's about that's it about the, uh, the history of the Hebrew letter Ma. So as many of the, I think there's 11, 11 letters in the Hebrew alphabet that can be used as prefixes. Um, I'll try to put them all in a table as well at the end of the, the course. Um, but yeah, Ma is also used as a prefix. Um, it can mean from. So when you use that in the word, we know that the word al means God. So me'al means from God, or from a king means, means me'melech. So me is used to indicate from, from who, whom you receive something or, okay. An example of a parent word that starts with the letter ma. So I try to, in the examples, use the same words over and over because it just gives you, you get familiar with those words, so it's easier to understand when, for example, there's a different prefix or a different suffix. Um, so I've used the word melech a couple of times by now, so you, you are familiar with it, and you know that melech means king. Um, it can also mean reign or kingdom. So melech is spelled ma, lam, and kaf. Um, so if you look at the meaning of the pictures, again, there are different combinations that you can play around with, but the mighty authority that subdues, if you can remember that Gav means to, to lay down your own will and to subdue. So yeah, your king, your melech is the one that, that you choose um, or who subdues you. And for us all, that is Yahusha, our king. So let's look at the numerical value of Ma. The numerical value of Ma is 40. Um, and as many, many of you can remember, that the letter four was associated with the, after number four was associated with the letter Dal. And then we looked at um, Messiah being the door and that four refers to um, Yeshua and to the kingdom. So in the previous lessons as well, I explained that when we look at multiples of 10, we look at that we are determining if something can be accepted or rejected according to the base number symbolic meaning. So if the number four means rule, reign, kingdom, or Yeshua, then four times 10 means to be acceptable or an unacceptable kingdom or rule. The letter Ma can also mean mature leadership because I believe that if you walk in mature leadership, you will have an acceptable reign. You will have an acceptable kingdom. <clears throat> so I, I talk about it in my disciple school series when, when I talk about kingdom principles, that we have to remember that all of us, we have our own kingdom. Um, you have your kingdom where you work. You have your kingdom at home. You have even have your own small kingdom inside of you. Your soul dimension is your kingdom where you must rule and you must reign as king. 
and we go through tests and trials to, to, to learn um, how to rule in that kingdom so that your circumstances won't um, have an effect on you and multiply on you, but that you will multiply and have an effect on your circumstances. You must be the yeast that multiplies, the good yeast. So I believe mature leadership um, is when you, you are able and you've, you've gone through all those processes of testing and learning so that you will, will be an acceptable ruler. Um, most people know and will say that um, 40 symbolizes a period of testing. And again, I do believe that's true as well, but that comes out of this concept of we go through periods of testing to equip us. Um, it's like training to become that, that mature and equipped um, leader who can rule his kingdom. Um, yeah, okay, so let's look at some examples of 40 that we find in scripture. So we have the 40 days and the 40 nights of the flood water. So you might think, how does that connect now to what I've just said? So again, what did Abba do? Um, he said, let us go down and see how the people of the earth has sinned and corrupted everything on earth. So the, the kingdom that was reigning on earth at that stage was unacceptable to unacceptable to Abba. So he came down and he judged the earth with 40 days and 40 nights of flood waters. Then we get the children of Israel who sinned against Abba and they had unbelief. They didn't want to believe the spies. So yeah, in turn, they had to dwell 40 years in the wilderness and go through that period trial of testing. But also if you, again, I explain it in my disciple school series where you look at the, the whole um, track from Egypt um, being our salvation, going through the Red Sea, going into the wilderness and how that is our training and preparation for us before we go into the promised land. So that's very important. Again, the 40 that refers to the period of, periods of testing and equipping us to be able to, to conquer the giants so that we can um, get our inheritance. And then we have the 40 days of Moses that he spent upon um, Mount Sinai. Um, I think he did that twice. Um, we also had Yahusha um, before he, he started um, his ministry. You had the 40 days of fasting in the wilderness. We get the 40 days of fetal development. That's no, not scriptural, but um, biological and just a, an interesting um, connection because I think, again, it's symbolic and prophetic about the equipping and preparation before you, you get into to your world or before you are birthed into your calling. Um, if we look at Moshe's life, he, for 40 years, he lived in Egypt. For 40 years, he lived in the wilderness, being equipped. And then again, he spent 40 years leading Abba's people to the promised land. The spies investigated the land for 40 days. And these 40 chapters in the book of Exodus. Um, we see in the Bible that there were 40 years where judges ruled um, Israel. And the first three kings of Israel all ruled for 40 years. So, yeah, that, that really has to do with kingship and rulership. Um, but we also know that 40 is associated with the bride. And I think the reason for that is um, we, we are called to, to reign and rule with Yeshua in his thousand-year kingdom. And we need to be equipped for that. We, we need to, yeah, it's not, it's not going to be, I think, an easy job. So I, I really al always say that we must not get discouraged when we go through trials and when we are put in difficult situations, but really to ask about, allow him to teach us and um, give us that godly wisdom um, and allow him to use the situation to train us to be better kings, to be better equipped 
if we find, find ourselves in that situation again. Because if we don't go through that, you, you won't be able to reign with them. Um, so I think that's a, yeah, a very good reason why the number 40 is associated with the bride. We are all called to be kings or queens um, with Yahusha Messiah. So the second letter for tonight then is the letter Nun. The letter Nun has the same name in um, ancient Hebrew as in modern Hebrew, it doesn't, it doesn't change. Um, the name is Nun, the pronunciation is N as in U again, um, exactly the same as in um, English. Um, the picture, uh, people, debated um, about the picture for a long time um, but what what they did is they looked at the meaning of of the word nun in um, yeah in Hebrew and also what is more associated with that letter so in the ancient Hebrew the word nun means sprouted seed but some people see it as a fish um, I think in Aramaic nun means fish as well um, some people even see it as a snake but if we look at all of the evidence, I think the most supported thing is that it means um, a sprouted seed. So the meaning and the interpretation of this letter can be a seed. Um, a seed is given to continue your lineage. So it can also mean your heir. It can mean an inheritance and that what your seed or your heir is about to inherit. Um, it can mean life. When a, when a seed starts to sprout and push forth green leaves, it, it's a symbol of new life. Um, it can mean to continue because it's all about your genetic information or your inheritance that's passed down to, your next, to the next generation, to your son. So obviously it can mean the new generation and it can also mean son. The numerical... Sorry, biblical value of, of Nun is 50. So the letter Nun is spelled with a Nun Nun, so it's twice the same letter. And the physical meaning, the, the, the concrete meaning of Nun in ancient Hebrew is sprout or continue. And what's a beautiful example in the Bible is where we read in Judges, we read about Joshua, the son of Nun. So Joshua and Caleb was the two spies who came back with a positive report. The rest did not have a positive report um, for Moses. So they were the only two who did not die in the wilderness of, of that um, generation. Um, so literally Joshua means the son of life. And if you go into the Hebrew and you look at Joshua's name and his name in Hebrew is exactly the same. It's spelled exactly the same as the name of Yosha, letter for letter. So he's almost like the most prophetic example. Um, it was the prophetic picture of the coming of Yosha, the son of Yahweh. So um, what was also so beautiful to me, when you read about his life, it said there when he was only starting to, I assume when he was just being trained by Moses and, and starting to, um, yeah, coming to his leadership role, um, that he never left um, the presence of Abba. He never left the tent. He stayed in the tent of me, uh, uh, in the tent of meeting. Didn't want to leave there, um, and that was very interesting to me because he was not actually allowed into the tent because he was not a Levite. He was not even of the tribe of Judah, and I realized that even then he understood the principle of the order of Melchizedek, and Joshua was a priest and a king, a ruler according to the order of Melchizedek. Um, yeah, and he was allowed in the tent and he just stayed there and, and he had this 
presence of life um, on the inside of him. And also Moses, who, who represents the law, um, he was the one who, who led the children out of Egypt. But, but Joshua was the one who had to lead them into the promised land. Only he can do that. So, you know, it's just a beautiful picture. Anyway, I'm getting off track now. So the name of the letter Nun is spelled Nun Nun. So again, you can look at all the different meanings of Nun and combine them. But to me, what made sense is to continue the inheritance. And as, as I said, Nun can also represent the sun. Um, so the, the Hebrew word for sun um, is Ben, and it's spelled with the letter Beit and the letter Nun. So you get the house, the family, and then you get the seed or inheritance. So it's the family's inheritance. It's the son. He's the one who builds forth the house. Okay. Um, other interpretations, if you combine those two um, Nuns, can mean the seed of life. Um, it can mean a new generation of sons, which also to me refers again to the order of Melchizedek, um, those who understand that and who will walk in that. Um, it can mean the heir to life. And again, if we look at Joshua, the son of Nun, Joshua, the son of a new generation. Um, that's why they call it the Joshua generation. It's those who, who looks at others' promises um, and who are not afraid of the giants who who says, but this, this is a good promise, and I know Abba is mighty enough to give this into our hand. Um, so I believe it, I will not fear. So I just want to encourage all of you um, who might be looking at a promise in Abba's word to never look at and just see the giants, to really stand on his word, on his promise, to know that his hand is mighty to save, um, and yeah, to just count yourself um, among the, the Joshua generation. The four forms of the Hebrew letter Nun. So we've got the ancient Hebrew on the left, that is the sprouting seed. Then we've got the middle script. Um, it's quite similar, it looks a little bit like a, a lightning bolt. The late script and the middle script is very similar. And then we have the, the modern Nun, who also has a medial and a suffit form. So the middle script um, was adopted into the letter N, but it was reversed again because they read from, from left to right like us and not from right to left like the, um, the Hebrew language. Um, yeah, I think if you, I can see the letter in. So that is the history of the Hebrew letter and how it evolved. Um, the Nun, I know, I don't know much about um, this field of study in the Hebrew language, but I know that Nun is also used as a prefix, but it's uh, more used to um, indicate tense and um, yeah, so when Nun is used as a prefix, um, it's added to a verb, and then it indicates the first person plural future tense. So you will know it's plural. In, in other words, it will be we and not he or she or I, um, and it's in the future, future tense. So it will, for example, mean we will. So mar means to say, so no mar means we will say. So you can just make a, a note of that, that Nun is also used as a prefix. Okay, an example of a parent word. The word I chose for the letter Nun is the word Navi. Uh, many of you have Bible translations that give the name of the, all the books of the prophet. They call it the Navim. So Navi means prophet. It's spelled Nun, Bet, Yad, and Al. Um, and the root Hebrew word 
afterward na wie is spelled nun bet nav and it means fruit that's actually the word for fruit so we look, if we look at the meanings of the pictures it will say the seed inside the hand of authority so if we look at the the root word nun and bet nav it means the seed inside so with a prof, prophet it's the seed inside the hand of authority and the seed is something that will bring you life so many times when abba um sends out or calls a new prophet with a new message it's really somebody that he has prepared somebody to whom he will give spiritual authority and to this person he will give the seed he'll put the seed in their hand and and send it out to the people and those who receive the seed will get a new revelation will get new life um so yeah that's also a beautiful example to me of um the word pictures it can also mean the one who brings forth the inner fruit um, that a prophetic word is a fruit produced from inside of man it's not something you can see or understand with your physical eyes your physical senses it's produced in the heart in the spirit man um, and it's something that comes from Abba so that is our example um, word that starts with the letter nun is Navi. Oh my, sorry, I see this a very strange little extra slide here on the left. I don't know how that happened. I printed this out as a PDF. Um, nonetheless, let's look at the numerical value of the letter nun. So again, I'm using the, the principles given by Ira Milligan. Um, so the numerical value of the letter Lam is 50, oh, of the letter Nun, sorry, that's a mistake. So the number five, as we know, symbolizes service. Um, most people will speak about five as grace, which I do believe is only a part. We've discussed it um, when we looked at the letter Hay. I think that was five, yeah. And um, that five service is about grace and obedience. It's about walking in that balance of understanding both and walking in both. Again, which is a, a picture of the order of Melchizedek. So five times 10 is 50, which means an acceptable service um, if it is used in a positive context. Um, and Abba has really been confirming for me that um, we need to look at the, the number five and 50. We need to look at the order of Melchizedek is busy, really breaking this open deeper and deeper and deeper because that's really what we are called for in this season, in this time. Um, and I think that many of believers only walk on the one side of the order. They either walk in grace or they walk in obedience and they lack fruit, they lack grace. And he's calling us to, to learn the balance of both and then we will have and walk in acceptable service to him. So examples of 50 in the scriptures. There were 50 days from the Exodus to the giving of the Torah. There were 50 days, there are 50 days in the counting of the Omer um, when we look at the feasts. Um, and I think that 50 days again has to do with because if we look at the meaning of the festivals we look at Pesach um, which is about being born again and accepting um, um, Yahushua as your lamb and, and, and the, the covenant he restored for you and then you have the Feast of Unleavened Bread which teaches you word and right from wrong it's to remove the leaven and the sin from your life um, it teaches you the letter of the word, but then you need to go from the letter of the word to the spirit of the word and start to live in the fulfillment of it. And that's where the 50 comes in. It's, it's to learn to walk in that grace and obedience, to be taught, but also to learn to then you can't do it out of flesh, but you need this grace to walk it out in spirit. Um, and then 50 days later, um, while you're counting the Omer, you get Shavuot, and that's when um, first uh, the first time was the um, when the 
the Torah was given and the other fulfillment was where his spirit was brought out again. Again, going from the letter to the spirit. Then we have the Jubilee year. So it was a law given to, to celebrate the Jubilee. Um, and they will go in cycles of seven years, where every seventh year there was a Shabbat year, where the land rested and they um, released it. But then there was like the big, big Shabbat year, which was a Jubilee. And that was seven times seven um, um, Shabbat years. So the 50th year will then be the Jubilee. And that was when all debts were forgiven. All your debts. I mean, that must have been a wonderful principle. And I think the world would have been a better place if we could have lived by that principle. But it's so prophetic because the last Jubilee is coming and it has to do with um, Yom Kippur. And I believe that will be the day when Abba finally releases us from all our debts, um, you know, to the fullest. The, the, the price has been paid, um, but, yeah, when everything just in our DNA, in every spot and everything will, for once and for all, will be removed. Um, yeah, sorry. The next example is um, the priests only stayed in service until they turned 50. So if you remember um, when we talk to, talked about the number 30, I said that that was the age that was given by the Torah when somebody was allowed to enter a service into the tabernacle, one of the, the priests. You can only start in your priesthood when you turn 30 years old. But the word also says that you can only work until as a priest until you are 50 years old. So that gives you 20 years of service it's kind of symbolic that you get to that age where your service is acceptable. You've done your duty, you've done your job and what was required of you, and that's acceptable, and then you, you are released. So that's a good example for me of what um, the meaning of the number 50, a confirmation of it in the word. Um, Sorry, I just want to go back. So I always try to take it back. So how can the, the meaning of the number 50 relate to the meaning of the letter noon? And what's interesting is how you can see the double letter, the noon noon. Uh, again, for me, it's confirmation of the order of Melchizedek, how it must be exactly the same on both sides. You cannot be unequally yoked when you walk in this order. Um, and, and, and that if you learn to do that, if you learn to walk in the order of Malchizedek, that is the seed of life. Um, and that will bring forth a new generation of sons. Okay, so that is our two letters for tonight. So then I also gave you two um, examples that we, we could gonna look at and I please want you to participate. Um, I've again written out the meaning of the letters for the first example. The second one I'm not gonna do, but um, yeah, let's look at the first example. <clears throat> so the first word we're gonna look out for to look at tonight is the word malia, and malia means first fruits or fullness, and it's spelled with the letter. Ma, the letter Lam, the letter Al, and the letter Hai, Malia, the fullness. I'm going to give you just like a minute or two to just write it down and go through your notes and, and look at the different meanings of each letter and see with what combination you can come up with.
Okay, so um, let me go on one slide, slide. So I've written them down like this for you to maybe make it a bit easier and you can combine words from the different letters. What do you see that reveals something deeper about first fruits or fullness? So those of you not familiar with the festivals, so, sorry, the first festivals are, like I've said, is Pesach, which is symbolic of our being born again and accepting Yahushua as the lamb um, and to have his blood over your life and to be in covenant with him. Then we go into the festival of unleavened bread, which is usually seven days. And it's all about learning what leaven is, which is symbolic of sin, and to remove that from your house and your heart. And then after that, we get the fest festival of first fruits. So Yahusha was the first fruit risen from the grave. Um, he was also, I believe, the one who really produced uh, out of his spirit the first fruits of the spirit um, in purity. You know, that was not a, a, a fruit of the flesh. So it's all about the first fruits of the harvest um, was harvested and given to Abba or shown to Abba as an offering. And if the first fruit was accepted and good, then the whole harvest was approved. So it was such an important thing for Yahusha to accomplish because he was the first fruit. He was perfect. He was acceptable in Abba's eyes. And because of that, the whole harvest um, that includes all of us, that is still to, to be harvested, we are already approved um, because of Yahusha. So let's see. So what stood out to me was the mystery, the letter Ma. Remember, it can mean a mystery. Um, Lam can mean towards, Al can mean first, and Hay can mean, can mean reveal. So the mystery to, towards the first revelation, the first revelation of fruit. And I think there is something mysterious about that. It's, it's if you study the whole process of, of harvesting and of planting seeds and you go through all those steps from planting a little seed that contains that, that DNA, that message of righteousness and it's planted and it starts to bear fruit. I mean, it doesn't look like the seed you first started with. It's really a miracle in its own right. And the fact that, you know, a whole harvest can be blessed because of one, the revelation of one good fruit. Um, yeah, so that's what stood out for me. But I would really like to see what any of you um, interpreted from, from this word. Please share it in the chat bar. Um, let's see. Uh, Beatrice says, um, Yeshua, the glue that binds us together by the power of the spirit. Okay, so the glue is the ma. He is the shepherd, so that's Yeshua, that's good. The binds by the power is the aleph, and the spirit is the breath. That's beautiful, Beatrice. I think that's a very... Um, a very beautiful interpretation and, and he binds us together as, as the harvest um, that is to come. He is the one factor that connects all of us. Thank you so much, Beatrice. I think you, you have a really good one here. The rest of you can definitely um, write this one down. Anybody else or can we continue? Okay. The second word is the, the word um. 
Am means to bind, it means glue, it means arm, and it means mother. And it's spelled with the letter Aleph or Al and the letter Ma, Al Ma or Aleph Mem. I don't know why, but it's like as if the, the modern Hebrew letters, the names of the letters is more fluently to pronounce. It's, it's, it's nicer to say than, than Al Ma. Aleph Mem. <laughs> I don't know, it sounds more like you are spelling something out. Um, so it's the word um, mother. So if you all remember in the first lesson, we talked about the word for Abba, for father, which is Av or Abba. And my father means Avi. Um, and then I explained to you all how it means the strength of the house and how the father is the one that holds the house up. And it also means pole or the main tent pole. And that if that is pushed over, then the whole tent collapses. So that's a very beautiful picture of the role of a father. But the Hebrew word for mother is just, is also a very beautiful picture in its own right. And it also explains the role of a mother very well. So what they used to do is they will, um, when they slaughter animals, they will use, I think, the skin and even some of the <clears throat> um, tendons and the, the gluey parts, and they will boil that down. They will boil that and then use that water and boil it down and down until they end up with a really sticky liquid that they use as glue, you know, to seal things and to fix things. Um, but the letter um can also mean arm in Hebrew, literally, um, because they say, just like glue keeps things together, in the same way a mother uses her arms to keep the family together. So the mother is literally the glue of the family. And I've seen that so many times, especially when the kids get older and they have their own families. Um, a mother is the one who makes sure everybody gets together and still do things together, so they will keep and have that family bond. Um, she's really the bonding angel, agent and, and plays such an important role. And the stronger her relationship with her children are, you know, if there's been nourishment and um, that love, the stronger the glue. Um, yeah, so basically that's the meaning of the word. So if you look at the pictures, it's very straightforward, but I think it's still worth a try. Um, okay, sorry, I see, I just want, uh, Selena, I'm not sure that you, um, is your example for this, you're still on the previous one. Okay, sorry, I'm just quickly want to go back. Celine gave an example for the letter Malia, and she said, the blood removes the yoke with power when you repent. Yo, that's beautiful. Um, uh, yeah, I can see that because when you repent, usually that's when you start, you know, in the place of repentance, already you start producing fruit. Thank you, Celine. That's a beautiful addition. So anybody with an interpretation for the letter of uh, the word um? So if you would add uh, um, in the same as RV, you can make Ami, which will mean my my mother, Ami. Anybody that wants to see, look at an interpretation. So remember, mom can mean liquid, water, blood, glue, sea, mighty, mystery, chaos. So it can mean the strong glue that is a, a mother that which keeps things together. It can mean um, <clears throat> the power of the blood. That's why they say there's nothing like a mother's love or fierce mother that will protect the children. It's the power of, of blood, of a mother's blood, of being, being a child. Um, 
it can be the, the mystery, um, the strength and the mystery of a, of a mother's love. But yeah, I think the, the thing that really touched my heart was the, the strong glue. Um, now that I'm a mother myself, it's really like that. It's important. This just, it's a deeper form of love that yeah, you can't explain. Um, anybody else? Nobody? So this is then our last word study for tonight. I just then want to give you a last word that you can take home. So the word I want to give you is the basis word or the root word for Adonai. It's the word Adon. It means base in Hebrew. Um, what I mean by base is if you look at a pillar, because pillars were common, commonly used in the biblical times in temples or houses. So if you look at a pillar, the structure of a pillar, you had a base and that was what gave the pillar its strength. So yeah, that means Adon means base, but it can also mean Lord or master. And it is spelled with an Aleph, a Dalet and a Nun, Al Dal Nun. So write it down. Um, if you can do it tonight, otherwise you won't get to it next week, pray over it and ask Abba to reveal to you a deeper meaning of Adon. Just to quickly go back, Beatrice said um, again, with the letter Am, which means mother, she said it means the powerful mystery. Um, and with that, she refers to motherhood. That is beautiful and so true, <laughs> a powerful mystery what a mother will not do for a child. Okay, I'm gonna stop the screen sharing. Anybody else with any questions or comments or something they just wanna chat about? Um, you're more than welcome to ask in the, the Q&A box or in the, the chat box. I hope you enjoyed tonight's lesson. Um, I can't believe we're over halfway. It feel like, um, yeah, our time is getting shorter, but I'm really enjoying presenting this to all of you and having you all here. And um, thank you for taking time um, out of your evenings to, to spend with me. Um, my Abba really blessed the rest of the course and and come and just you know give us new man a new revelation about the letters and about his word so if nobody has any questions this will then be the end of our lesson shalom